Lady and gentlemen, let us talk about the refreshing Yen talk. Today, first topic is widely homing good courses for mastering the future. He who loves others is constantly loved. He who respects others is constantly is. One day. Sakyamuni Buddha took a sage, Anan, and uh, Maha Kasaba out with him to expound Buddhist sutras in order to educate and uh, lead people to Buddhism. The weather was uh, so scorching that the uh, the uh, instruct sage Ananda to ask for some water to quench thirst from a wee warm woman who was sc scooping up water from the wheel. Surprisingly, Ananda was scooped by the woman. He was dejected. Despondent and uh, returned with empty hands. This time, the Buddha ordered Mahakasapa to beg arms. As Mahakasapa approached the well, the woman smiled and said, Ah, Master, what do you need? So, he demanded, some water to drink. The woman gets him to scoop up the water right away. One scoop was to make an offering to the Buddha, while the other was for Mahakasapa himself. Another was displeased when he saw what happened, so he asked to the Buddha, what is the reason for the different treatment? And the Buddha then explained the cause of the situations. Uh, in the past life, the woman was a mouse. One day, uh, the mouse was ran over and killed by a carriage. When the another walked past the mouth. He was ranging inside because of the smelling from the corpse of the dead mouse. He thought to himself, dead mouse, you sting. And quickly, and quickly walked by with his nose covered. A later, Makasaba came across this dead mouse too instead of doing what another did. He buried the dead mouse mercifully after seeing it lying dead. Also, he chanted the Buddhist curse, the reverse incarnations, to heal expiator the sins of the dead mouse. For this cause, the mouse was able to reconnect as a human means this life. Judging from this cause and effect, I perfectly accurate the so called loss the greater for the less, the mind does that even a little bit of karma cannot be escaped despite the millions of years had elapsed. Well, there are still the many people who don't believe in the cause and the effect. They think they want to be the held liable for 
evil doing, such as drinking alcohols, visiting the prostitutes, gambling, killing, and arson. Uh, they act fearfully and commit sins and evil karma, as if this reward is completely loadless. They think they want to be the held accountable for the causes. That is to say, the evil doings once is done and suffer the consequences. Uh, that is to say, the retribution for evil doings. Neither are they a fight of the retribution of the karma, which the follows one around at all times. In modern days, one will definitely strike back when hit by the someone. One will also be told when being scolded. They're skinned against each other. Frame map each other. And even fight with both open and secret means. There is absolutely no compassion, no forgiveness, and no mercy whatsoever. The Hostility gets worse as they get more narrow mind. As a result, the society is full of cruelty and uh, fierceness. Confucius says, He who loves others is constantly loved. He who respects others is constantly respected. Start with ourselves with anything. Respect others first before they respect you. Back just like the famous the terms which it says. Treat, treat others with honesty and deal matters with respect. When it comes to treating people and dealing with matters, one must widely Built up benign in the relationship instead of building up weak in the relationship with others. Benign in the relationship makes one's will come anywhere and in all respects. Absolutely, weak in the relationship makes one's Disgusting. Next, we talk about the uh, reflection. The then talk topic is the view of infinite mercy in Buddhism. If one can forgive others, one can treat oneself well. You one can pardon others, one can liberate oneself. One of the Sakyamuni, the Buddhist, the past lives, he was sitting still under a tree practicing Buddhism. When he came across a king who brought his princess consuls out for a hunt. The princess consuls were enjoying themselves as they noticed a very steadily Buddhist brothers sitting still under a tree. So they approached the man and asked him to teach them the dharma. After hearing what the man had to say, they were well pleased and filled with the joy of the diamond as the fully the test 
the flavor of the thermal, which was like the whilst the cream means poured over the head. During this time, uh, the king was busy searching for his princess consort. Uh, he was getting furious when he couldn't find them. Suddenly, he saw lands surrounding a Buddhist monk. So he put up. The, king, the kings approached the monk and uh, shouted angrily, you are spreading horses here to deceive people and you have my princess consult baffled. Since you are a Buddhist monk, I want to test you. I want to know to what extent is your practice on Buddhism. So the king he adopted his sword and chopped down the monk's hand at once. Are you angry? The king asked. I'm not. I'm not. The monk answered calmly as he would feel no pain. And when the king saw the monk didn't feel any pain, he was so calm. Instead, he cut the monk's leg. Are you angry now? He asked again, disbelieving what he saw. I'm still not angry, the monk replied peacefully this time. This time the king dug out the monk's eyes and asked complacently, Now, do you resent me for making you suffer? Not all. I, as I am not attached to the four marks of existence, I am not attached to the flesh, appearance, appearance Minority and minority or means life of person because I had not attached anything and acquired the manner already. Therefore, there is not a bit of the resentment in my heart. The monk answered firmly. He continued, I don't resent you for doing cruelly on me. Instead, when I become the Buddha one day, I will first save you by making you a monk to pride the Buddhas and head, uh, and head for enlightenment. And as soon as he finished saying his words, he entered the mala. The king was absent after hearing it. This monk was Sakyamuni Buddha in one of his past life. Back in Sakyamuni, the Buddha says, their first disciple, the Buddha Amit, was Jo Chen Lu. His attendant, who was the king that had the monk's limbs cut off. This story said that on the mercy in Buddhism, which is infinite, while Christianity, Catholicism, and every other Confucian based religion set light on a principle of benevolence and loyalty. 
which doesn't emphasize on the on recruiting evil with good as Buddhism does. Confucians once say that that a man is considered to be a saint if he forgives and pardons everybody, everybody. However, the Buddha's mercy surpasses the saint reign. Not only is he kind and generous to others, he is also infinitely much for to those who harm us. This kind of mercy is the true, unselfish, and now ego mercy. Living in this world, we should learn the mercy spread from the Buddha, the so called one should be strictly with oneself and uh, radiant towards others. One should reprove oneself as one reproves others. One should forgive others as one forgives oneself. If one has he has his the had his the generous magnanimity, then one can yet be regarded as a Buddhist disciple. Furthermore, we should forgive and uh, tolerate uh, the relatives around us at all times, especially between the couples. They often quarrel over the teeny weeny things and end up hating and annoyed with, uh, annoyed, annoyed with each other. These are all because that they are not May I numerous enough as we are not being tolerant enough toward each other. When we make mistakes, we always always want to have the others forgiveness. The same the applies to others. So when others or relative or couples make a mistake, we should forgive them. As the saying goes, thus, you one can constantly open up one's belief or might as we are as forgive and pardon the others. Then the one's heart will be free and refreshing like the saying. If you can forgive other people, you can treat yourself well. If you can pardon the other people, you can Liberate the yourself. The ocean can accommodate hundreds of rivers. The kind of space can accommodate all things. The reason why the ocean is extensive and the kind of space is mountainous is because they can a common dead. Learn to be like the sea and uh, the Balkan and the Balkan space, and just apply it to daily life. And the people that we come across, you so life would be the field with endless happiness, freedom, and the diamond. Uh, let's encourage each other in our endeavors. Next topic is life is short as time fly. Uh, life is short as time fly. It passes unconsciously in flicks of the fingers. Saka Sakyamuni's Buddha instructs a king in public, a life is short and transient, as it is also mutable and uh, impermanent. 
then he explained using a metaphor. One day, there was a man out wending in the wild uh, wilderness. Suddenly, a ferocious elephant came out of nowhere and started chasing him. Uh, he was uh, terrified and ran for his life. When he reached the end of the road, he discovered an old well in the confusion. Next to the well, there was a mine creeping to the bottom of the well. So he quickly jumped in the well in a panic with his hands holding on the mine. He, he had escaped the chest from the Ferocious elephant, but he was suspended in air. Then he realized that there were a black mouth and a white mouth, knowing, uh, knowing the mind. Plus, there were four snakes awaiting to bite the man. That was all. A poisonous dragon was eager to eat him at the bottom of the whale. Oh, he was a fly or mean eaten by the snake and the dragon. But with the mice, now in the mind above his head, what could he do? Just when he was tensely terrified. A colony of bees passed towards the hive on the mine and accidentally dropped white drops of honey onto his mouth. Having tasted the sweetness of the honey, he totally forgot that his life was on the line. So when the mines broke in two, the man fell to the bottom of the well, and the god swallowed by the dragon. Then the Buddha said to the king, Your Majesty, life journeys is just like the curls of the man being chased by the elephant and eventually fell to the bottom of the well. The wheel can be so as the custom of life and death. The mind is our lifeline. The two minds, one in black and the, the other is white, I, are days and nights. The mind, the mind, uh, means not always by the minds, represents the cycle of days and nights. Life gets shorter day by day, with days approaching day by day. The four snakes are the four ele elements of body, namely earth, water, fire, and wind. Our body is made up the, of these four elements. The earth element is the flesh on our body. The water element is the blood in our body. The fire element is our body temperature. The wind element refers to our respiration just one day. Every man will be swallowed by these four snakes, namely the four elements of the world the four elements become elusive and life ends for a man as the four elements manage. Why are men not aware of that the time passes in a blink of an eye and lay away that days and nights 
flesh by like Philippine show? This is all because we are greedy for the white desires, not his wealth, lust, fame, food, and sleep. Just like the man in the whale, we are greedy for the five drops of honey. He forgot temporarily that he was in danger when he tested he, when he tested the sweetness of the honey. Well, man is greedy for the five delights in such way and forget that the time fly and years gradually pass by. Until one day, when life is about to end, the four elements skate apart as one is old and sick. Then the mind is not weighed apart by the fight and the break mice naturally. Life will end up, a life will end as one falls to the bottom of the wheel and be eaten by the poisonous dragon. This night, uh, this month, flies by the quickly as shadow and the time flies like a needle, uh, like an arrow. Years and a month, a month, will be the gun in the twinkling of an eye. However, man often doesn't treasure the beautiful time in their life. They indulge themselves in wealth and lust, pursuing after fame and benefit, the, the but they forget that. In permanence, is around the corner. Instead of the indulging oneself in pleasure, one should learn the Buddhism. Cultivate one's moral character and humility. Cultivate blessing and eradicate evil karma in order to put a stop to this endless cycle of life and death. As a matter of fact, the above mentioned is the bad habits and the common feelings of an ordinary man. A wise man should make use of the precious life and the time and bear in mind that life is impermanent, mutable, and treasured. Let's not spend time in men. One should arrange some time each day for chanting the sutras, worshipping the Buddha by prostration, and involve oneself in charity work that benefits the public in order to enrich one's life and Temperament. <clears throat> Let your life shine, and your life will be the more refreshing and free. Don't you agree? Uh, next topic uh, we talk about a uh, letter from the king of hell. Never wait till one gets old to practice Buddhism as solitary soul I majority majority youngsters. There was an old man. After he died, he reached hell and uh, brought it to Yamalaja, the king of hell. 
Yamaja, Yamalaja contained the hymns by saying, when you were alive, your life was with your mean. You had opportunities to learn the Dharma. Why didn't you endeavor on pride in Buddhism, almsgiving, and do good deeds? Instead, you were degenerating and did so many evil doings. That's why you end up in hell. Uh, what a pity. You had uh, wasted your uh, valuable lifetime. The old man replied, Your Highness, why didn't notify me before bringing me here? All of a sudden, you called me here and uh, there was no time for me to practice Buddhism. It's not a lot. I don't win too. The king sneered at the old man and say, uh, How did I not inform you beforehand? I sent you a letter of not staring to come to Yamalaja home. In fact, I sent many of the land to you. Didn't you check? Didn't you check the land carefully? When did you write me a letter? How come I did not? How come I didn't know anything about it? The old man was puzzled. The king frowned at the man and saying and say. Andrew, I did not write you a letter. Don't you remember when you were young, when you, when your hair was black and looked great? great? Now that you are old and your hair has turned white, I'll send you the first letter when it starts turning white. And I wrote you another every time a hair turn white. If you count the hair that has turned white, there shall be thousands of them. The king continued by asking the old man, When you reached forty years old, your eyes start to burn, you need to Sweet calls to see clearly and let what another letter of notice. Plus, I gave you another notification when you start to be hard of the hearing. When your teeth start to loosen, I wrote you a letter with every fallen tooth. Come to the teeth that fell off, and uh, you know how many I had written to you. You sure had been prepared when you had one tooth remaining. Right at this moment, a young ghost rushed in suddenly and protested to the king. Yamalaja king had been unfulfilled at dealing with matters. You wrote so many letters to this old man, but I am so young, you didn't write me any letter. Why did you catch me and put me here? The king answered with a smile. I wrote you letters too. Where's the letter? My hair is not white. I'm not weak of hearing, nor has my teeth fallen off. My eyesight is a blurry either. My body is very healthy. Why do you call me here in all of a sudden? Where is the letter you wrote me? 
the young ghost say in a confusion, the king replied, I did. It was the same when you neighbor's child was thrown to death. The child was younger than you and he died. You are much older. How can you not die? That was the later. It's only that you didn't recognize that it was a letter and didn't understand the implication. How come Yamanaja King does not write to us? For is it because we don't see then, despite he was written so many? In fact, those letters are not handwritten. You won't know if you don't understand the meaning. Please count the letters the king has written to us. For every one of them, we must chant Amitabha once, maybe even up to tens of thousands of times. Just don't be slacked as you chant Amitabha. Uh, from the fable, we have learned that a man doesn't only die at old age. It could be any time and happen to any one of us. As the ancient the saints used to say, never wait till one gets old. To pride the Buddhism as solitary souls are maturity. The youngest. In fact, there are many young people buried, uh, buried in the grave. They are not completely. All old people. Life is uh, in permanent, mutable, and tradition. One must seize the opportunity of this life and change Amitabha digitally in our daily life of the transportation, accommodation, sitting and laying down. With every chant, we must not forget to visualize, mean, mourn in Western Pure Land. Then, naturally, there will be no obstacle in our life, as one day the Buddha and the Bodhisattva will receive and lead us to the Western Pure Land. When, uh, where? We will be free from the cycle of life and death, not recognition. I never wait till the king of fear has sent us a lot of letters and still not be aware of land. Now if you keep on fascinating or indulging in fierce lust, fame, benefits, and a relationship with close relative, then it will be too late to regret when Yamanaja King calls up up and out. Next topic uh, we talk about. Uh, Terrible self will. While we uh, while we feel jealous and angry, we have fallen to the hell of the lusts. The reason why there are so much distress, worries, wars, and disasters in this world is that they are all caused by the word I. 
Now let's break the word I in Chinese character, a part in interpret land separately about this character I on the left in is the character hand and the other is take X on the right. The take X can be considered as a knife. So you either kill yourself or you kill others. The question is who considers this Chinese character I as the real I in person? Of course, it's our evil creatures. That is the hindrance of past karma. The first emperor of China employed a tremendous amount of manpower to search for elixir. He kills countless people just to consolidate his power and influence. This all starts with I. The first emperor of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Hongwu, was afraid that his meritorious statesman Wu sees his country power. So when he became the emperor, he killed his meritorious statesmen of find a country one by one in secret. Even Liu, Liu Bo Wen, who had helped Zhu become the emperor, I was, pointed, was, was pointed to this. Uh, from the historical stories, we learn that all the evil doings start with self-will. As for the victim, they are just waiting for the opportunity to revenge with every means. The fierce hatred between the two parties will never end thus they slaughter one another. When we watch any more channel on TV, we often see a lot of animal, low ones, and they find a regular place to stay. They make low sound and uh, movements to warn other animal of the same kind that this is my territory. They will also show up their invisible might as well as bold and powerful action. This is showing the off is to remind others anymore and now not, and not to embed. And they are prepared at all times to protect their territory as they are willing to risk their life to fight against in traitors. However, uh, we find that it's funny thing, these actions that animals do. Commercially, when we look at uh, when we look at ourselves, we are just like the animal. As we are troubled by greed, ignorance, arrogance, and self-will. The diamond says that birth, death, illness, and old age are formed to two flesh and appearance. You one can do away with self-will and flesh and appearance, then one can and life and death cycle as well as a birth from the recognition and reach a light of mind. There was a man in the past who 
uh, Pastor Wu was the teacher uh, of the nation. He often approached the em emperor, which met the prime minister jealous. The prime minister uh, didn't dare to admit or tell. One day, prime minister uh, read a sentence, drifted and followed to the hell of Lassas in the Mutasan Sutra. So he went to the national teacher and asked, What does drift and fall to the hell of Lassas mean? The teacher just shout out the prime minister's name. For a man with such high status, the prime minister had been elegant all along. So he was furious at hearing the teacher shouting his name daringly. Seeing the prime minister in anger, the national teacher said to him, Right at this moment, you are in the hell of Lassas, as you are angry. He said, for, and so is your heart. Wouldn't you say that you are living in the hell of Lassas right now? Therefore, our temporary evil intentions and thoughts uh, we are given lies to the ten diamonds world. We are all attached to the temporary appearance of I, which caused us to have I do so. Then the formless distress will be aroused and cause us to commit all kinds of evil karma, which lead us to hell. This kind of idle thought will make us fall to the hell or last any time. And therefore, it is essential to be big land and encourage ourselves to drop flesh. Also, to understand that this impermanent body formed due to the temporary unit of water. Fire, wind, and earth. The four elements is fake and elusive. As it doesn't last, then the next step is to use this fake body to practice the real Buddhism. Turn distress to body, which is the supreme wisdom. War enlightenment, and soon you will be in the Buddhist kingdom and the diamond world. During the process of practicing the Buddhism, we must utterly get rid of flesh and appearance. Don't carry any idle thoughts in your heart, and don't be attached to any wealth, appearance, whim, and manifold. Then one mind and body will be refreshing and free naturally. The fish will appear at the water, clear up. Peaceful, quiet, and formless mind and wisdom will land the view. Eventually, we can break away from all these stress and end all life and the death cycle. The rest of we are talking about the uh, diamond words, oh. self-force and self-heart. 
our own foods are a lot. So never speak ears of others. Our own heart I confused. So never speak hearts of others. Our own foods should be sold over first before we watch others' foods. Our own hearts should be settled down first before we watch others' hearts. The heart of confusion and gasp can automatically be removed. Next. The greed of people. Uh, people are greedy for wealth because they enjoy consumption. People are greedy for lust because they desire pleasure. People are greedy for fame because they enjoy honor. People are greedy for food because they enjoy taste. People are greedy for sleep because they enjoy comfort. The white desire which they are greedy for, once taken away, will rise hatred. Since hatred arises, all the evil things will be done, and eventually they will fall to the evil pains and suffer unlimited pains. Time is up. Thank you. Amitabha.